Welcome back, guys. So I've got another question. And this one has asked me, Tobile, what is the spike when there is a certain graph? So Garabo sent me a, a one, but I can't really see the questions properly. So I do have one similar um, to the one that he sent me because it's not very clear. But the one I have to why is there a certain spike when other things are in equilibrium or there's just a little arch and so forth. So I'm going to, we're going to scrutinize this. Uh, golly, let's just use a, another color. So if we have a graph and they've given us, it says H2 gas plus I2 gas, and then we've got 2HI gas. Just to deviate a little bit from this, guys, one thing you guys must remember in matric, and I've seen that with my own kids in my own class, that you guys make this mistake. If they give you a reaction, it does not always mean it's balanced. So make sure, even though it looks balanced and it looks like it's okay and you trust your examiners, it is not always balanced. Make sure you first look at your uh, equation and you scrutinize it and you balance it out. Because when you guys start calculating the KC, that is when most of you guys make mistakes. And remember, if negative marking implies, unfortunately, you are going to lose marks. So this is the reaction that we are given. And then here... I've got this one going up. There's a certain spike, and then it comes back down. And then I've got one straight line, and then this one goes up. I've got another straight line. However, this one goes down. Now, based on this graph, they've given, or they've told me that this is H2. This is HI, which is my product. And this is I2. So now let's see. Tell me, like, you know, you can ask tops, what is happening on this graph? Now, I want us to scrutinize it correctly. If I've got H2 here and I've got I2, these are my products, remember? Product, uh, these are my reactants rather. They are being used up. What do we wanna make? We wanna make this, which is my product. Now, my H2, they were in equilibrium all the way here. What did equilibrium tell us? If all the reactants are acting or are in the same rate, they are occurring at the same rate with the forward and the reverse reaction, are equal or at equilibrium because it's a straight line. Nothing is nothing is being used up, nothing is going down and so forth, but only until here. Now this equation or this equilibrium, um, in, let's say it's in a sealed container, something starts happening. I can already see that this as my product, it has a certain spike. Now, I want you guys to never, never forget this. If it doesn't have a little, a, a gradual arc like this one, like, nah, like, a, like a nice hill, but it shoots all the way up, and then it comes down, it means there was concentration. Concentration. It means more of this was added or more of this was being pumped up. And now remember, if we pump more of this up, it has to, for, it has to favor the forward reaction because more and more needs to be made. If your mother keeps bringing more and more ingredients for you to bake a cake, you're going to make more and more and more cupcakes. So the more you pump in or the more reactants you pump in, the more products you're going to get in. Now, if I'm putting in more, more reactants, HI is my product. What happens? More and more cupcakes are going to occur or more and more HI is then going to occur. But if I'm putting in more and more of this, it means I need to be using more and more of this. So this is being used up. That's why this one is going down. I'm going to be using more and more and more of this. So now I want you guys to think of it gradually. If you have two things that are working to, with each other to make something, if we put more and more of this one, this one needs to keep up. It cannot just sit there and like, yeah, wait for it. No, it has to keep up. So it's working extra hard. But now remember, we are pumping more of this. So as this increases, this one gets low because it's running out, it's running out. And what does the product happen? We are making more and more products because this system is trying so hard to keep balancing all these things the entire time. So it either favors the forward or the, or the reverse reaction, the forward and the reverse reaction, so that it ends up in equilibrium at, the, at, at all time. And then another uh, question that comes up uh, with Karabo's question is they ask you, is this reaction homogeneous or heterogeneous? Now remember, when, we, when homogeneous and heterogeneous was um, introduced, it was in grade 10. You know, we talked about homogeneous mixtures, pure substances, compounds, and so forth. But when we get to um, chemical equilibrium, homogeneous and heterogeneous means in what phases is it? So it's very important that you are actually given phases. Remember, when we talk about KC, we cannot add things like solids and liquids because they, um, they're not constant. But now, if we've got gases, I've got a gas here, I've got another gas here, I've got another gas here, and now from grade 10, we've learned if things are the same or they are uniform or they are consistent the whole time, then we say it's homogeneous. 
home, think of at home, everyone at home should, or like you will have, you have the same, maybe that you like the same things, the same DNA and so forth. Let the biology teachers not kill me, but people, if you come from the same mother and father, you are more or less the same. But hetero is something otherwise. If something was hetero, we could have said this is a solid or this is an aqueous solution or this might be a liquid. They are not in the same phases, so it's hetero. Home means homo. So karabo, this will then be a homogeneous mixture or reaction. Uh, let's see, we have another question. Let's see which one do I have now? Okay, this one is from Mlungisi Hatebe. I hope I'm saying, it, uh, I'm saying that right. Hatebe. And Mlungisi has given me three graphs, P, Q, and R, and he's asking which one um, is possibly KC versus temperature and so forth. So Mlungi, see, I'm going to take it up a notch for you because before we can understand why that is occurring, we need to understand what is happening. Okay, so let's, let's write this one. This is quite long. So we have, we have gas X and Y are pumped. Now remember, when we talk about gas, they get pumped, especially if you have like a gas heat at home, you take the gas tank and they go and pump some gas for you. It's pumped into a two cubic decimeter. Now another mistake that most of you guys make, remember when you are given volume, well in grade 10 and in grade nine, when we calculate volume and capacity and stuff like that, we can use cubic centimeters. But when you get to grade 12, make sure you know how to convert from cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters. Because if you do not use that, it is unfortunately correct and you might get negative marking. And I mean, obviously you don't want to show your examiners that you are still all the way back in grade nine and you don't know how to um, um, convert. So it's pumped into a cu two cubic decimeter container. Now what happens is that when the container, when the container is sealed, now remember, they would obviously talk about sealing a container because we get an open system or we get a closed system. In a closed system, everything inside the container reacts with each other. In an open system, the environment is more or less um, involved. Like it's like when you're doing um, work energy and power, you, some, you have an isolated system or a non-isolated system where friction is actually um, ignored and so forth. But in this case, um, it is sealed. Container is sealed. Then we have then four, that is supposed to look like a four. Then four moles, four moles of gas X of gas X and Y are present. So once this is sealed, now we know that gas X and Y, four moles are present. Now I want you to think, X and Y must then be reactants. And what are they trying to make? They're trying to make a product. So now they've given us the equation. It is balanced. They've got, we've got two X of G plus three Y of G and my final product is x squared, x, actually it's, um, they call it a subset, x, th y3, a subset, and g. Another important thing I want to stress out is when you're doing a chemical equation, these two lines. Um, you know, you can use drawings like this, that is not bad, but it's actually better to use ones like this. But don't use something like this or use an equal sign. This is completely wrong. Arrow shows direction, equal sign is used for mathematics. When we talk about equilibrium, Le Chatelier's principle, we have to show these little two edges that shows that it can either shift to the my right or it can sh shift to that side, which is your left. Now, the graph that we have here, I actually can't wait for us to start doing some calculations. The graph that I have here, and then it goes up. Already you can see, oh, Tobile, this one is actually going down, meaning that the reactants are being used up. But then we can see there's a certain spike there, so something must have happened. And then I move all the way up, and then when I get here, I have another spike coming down. And remember what I said, if they're gonna ask you questions about anything, if they've given you a graph, make sure everything that you ask or answer actually comes from the graph. Don't take anything uh, that you were not given. This is, this is 30. So my time is in seconds. That is 30, and then this is 70. Now, the question here asks us, let me use a different color. They say, how many moles, how many moles of 
x2, y3 are formed, are formed before it reaches equilibrium. Equilibrium. Now, very, 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 very important. We, so we said or we spoke about the definition of equilibrium where they are at the same rate, right? So now, just by looking at this graph, I can see that this one was being used up. Let me see my right, used up, used up, and this one is being formed. This one is being formed. So now I can already see that as this one has been used up, this one was being formed on this line at the time of 30 seconds, that is when it reached equilibrium all the way to 70 seconds. And then something must have happened here and something must have happened here. So this one gradually went up, this one gradually went down. I mean, obviously it can't be concentration, so they could have increased the temperature or the pressure or so forth. But the question that they're asking us now is how much of X2, subset two, Y3 was formed before um, at equilibrium. And just by looking at this, it started off at zero and when it reached equilibrium, it was 0 0.5 moles. So when it reached equilibrium, 0 0.5 moles of X2, Y3 were then formed. As you can see, I didn't take anything from, um, I didn't calculate anything and nothing to me was given. To add another question to this question, as an educator, I would then ask, for how long was this um, reaction in equilibrium? I mean, it was 30 and 70. So the difference between these two, so that would be then 40 seconds, then that will be how long it was in equilibrium. So this is the type of questions um, that you would be given or that you might get and so forth. And remember, you can actually find, they can also give you a different graph, maybe like KC versus time, KC versus pressure and so forth. But more or less, they can really give you something like that. That was Mlungis' question, the one that he gave us.